It's very weak, that. That wasn't weak. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what in the world? I'm getting insults. <laughs> weak clap. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how, how you are doing? You? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing already? <laughs> Claude, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just, if you say that, I need some type of coffee or something. But, mm. you know, um, but yeah, that's probably why I'm laughing already. Fair. But yes, um, yes, I'm good. Did you say, how are you? I did, See? yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Yes, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. Um, it seems like people enjoyed the episode we did the previous one we did um so i've come back again (laughs) with some more for you oh really yes 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 so i think this should be a thing that whenever we do these type of episodes do a little icebreaker and then we get into the episode especially because this one today is i don't want to say it's heavy it's not heavy it's not heavy no deep but not heavy meaningful meaningful authentic that's the words Authentic, Authentic. wonderful. Okay, yes. What do you mean authentic, actually? All our our conversations are authentic. (laughs) I don't don't think about... You know, you're taking advantage of the fact that I haven't had coffee today. (laughs) What do you mean? (laughs) Um, I guess I mean that we are peeling back a little bit around, like, how things actually work. So we both come on, we're, like, relatively happy, good demeanor type people, but that can mask a lot of how difficult things can be. Yeah, that's very true. I like that. Yeah, and I agree. Okay, so before we get to the how difficult things can be, mm-hmm. I've come to embarrass you again. You know what? I'm not. I'm not on it. I'm not on it. And in fact, I have some questions for you today. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. quick, quick fire Got round. Quick fire round. These are easy. Well, I'll start easy anyway. Wow. To get to know you a little bit more. Because I think people know me because you've heard me in episodes, but we don't know <laughs> the, the woman surprise. behind the scenes. Okay. So easy question for you. Would you call yourself an early bird or a night owl? Why are you doing this? Okay. Currently a night owl. Okay. What's the favorite city that you visited? Oh. Yeah, Cape Town was, Cape yeah, Town. was lovely. Awesome. Yeah. How many wires did King Henry VIII have? Eight? Six. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last movie or series that you watched? <sighs> what have I watched? Oh, The Crown. Yeah. It's back. Is it? Yeah, okay. it's, it came back. Um, oh gosh, I don't know when this episode is going, but yeah, it's back. So um, yeah, I'm enjoying I that. watched the um, spin-off thing and that was, that was actually really good, but not the okay. main thing. Uh, if you went on a holiday, a beach or a city type holiday? I need a beach holiday, but I always find myself in the city, but... Uh, 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 a beach holiday is what I I require. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What is the brightest star in the sky? The sun? Is that a star? (laughs) It is a star. It is, yeah. No, it's called uh, Cyrus, actually. What? What is, What's something... your favourite season of the year? Brighter than the sun? <laughs> <laughs> um, I say autumn because of the autumn winter because of the fashion. Okay, two more. Oh, are you really? What book are you currently reading? Um, I'm reading a devotion. Actually, can you read a devo? It's called um, what is it called? Wake up or something? It's by Jackie Hill Perry. Okay. Yep. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> it is upon waking. Upon waking. Yes. <laughs> last, <laughs> last question going to trivia for the final one okay. uh, what is the biggest island in the world what is this island Alex help me <laughs> an, 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 uh, biggest island in the world I'm sorry Claude you haven't, even said a, a, you haven't even said one yet let's go you know, islands are hard because some, some countries, you think they're countries, but they're islands. That's why I'm confused. You, you haven't answered the question. I, I, um, I reject it. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. It's Greenland. What the? I would never have said, you know what? There's many I wouldn't, I don't think I would have said anything. I didn't. <laughs> but that, you really took me. <laughs> what a surprise. 
What's going on? <laughs> that was good though. Well done. Thank you. Woo! It, it feels a bit when you're the one. Oh, that, it's not fun, is it? Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> um, but yes, you've woken me up though. That was like my little coffee fix. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> cool. Um, where do we go from here? So, do you know what? This actually is the highlight. This is how this is how our working relationship is. This is literally it. I've said this a few times that every single da- time I speak to Claude, he surprises me in some way. <laughs> with either if it's like a, a new idea, a new way of working or a pop quiz, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I really enjoyed that about you. Yeah, it's, I don't know if a lot of people get to experience that or even in your day-to-day because, you know, especially with like board roles and all of that, there's like a specific standard that you have to, to give. So you might not be able to always give show every element of you but on this podcast building this podcast it's been really amazing to experience that obviously it's also sometimes triggering because I'm like lord that my (laughs) my whole way of working or or living is like all over the place (laughs) um but yeah yeah I've enjoyed that I'm glad and I do I do enjoy being able to I guess show more of my personality Mm. because yeah sometimes I just have to be serious and about like the things that I do some of them require that that serious, more authoritative side of me where you can't be as be myself entirely. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to do that here. Good, yeah. I think I'm trying to think back to the first time I actually spoke to you or met you. I don't think I met you in person. I think it was virtually. But mm. I'm trying to think, did I actually feel like you were just this really serious guy? I don't know if I felt that way or... Yeah, or... I think I'm now realising that it's a 50-50 split. It's mm. a, it literally depends on at what point in the day you catch me or <laughs> what I'm doing at that time. So my sister, because I thought I came across as serious to most people, but literally earlier this week, my big sister was saying that I have boy next door energy, apparently. Boy next, what does and that I, even mean? I was just like, I've never heard of that before. No, no, explain what a boy so next door is. She was like, um, yeah, you come across as like, I guess like on a type of likable, type of approachable type mm. of thing. But then I'm also just like, I don't know if that's true all the time. But then your sister, who is your twin? For- I know it's my older sister. Well, anyway, Claude has a twin. That, yeah, I have a twin. <laughs> Do you know when I found this out? Maybe a few months ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I was like, hold on. You have not mentioned or anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so it wasn't your twin. This is my older sister. I yeah. just want everybody to know because now I know. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I, I think maybe because she has that familiarity with you that she can say that. But I also see it as, I see, yeah, I see it as well. Yeah, I see it as well. Mm. But I guess, like you said, if most people are see, seeing you in like the business function, I know mm. a lot of people say, oh, I'm in groups with Claude. Like, oh, I, you know, I know him in that remit, but they don't know you. Outside. Just, I, I think even within us, even us two, do mm. we really know each other outside? Not really, not really. I don't think so. No. We, we obviously spend a lot of time talking about the podcast and building Dream Nation, but I just, I don't feel like we, yeah, it's not like a... Yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Just realizing that, but still, I'm 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 receiving that. But yeah, I think today we're we're talking a lot about ourselves, and that's because we are going to be continuing to <laughs> talk about our, ourselves, our journey, um, creating this podcast, um, and also just building like a authentic work relationship that is. Um, yeah, meaningful. meaningful. Wow, all the words are coming back. Those, now. <laughs> those are actually when you said both days, they were the things that were in my mind as well. So yeah, we'll I took there. them from you because oh, you said them earlier okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were your first impressions of me? Oh, as a because remember the first time I met you, I was on the, a guest on one of your podcasts. I oh yeah, one on um, Preach Sis. Sis. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, so maybe not. <laughs> Not then, because I was at that time of the podcast. I was very quiet. I wouldn't, was even, very respond, quiet. I wouldn't even say anything. Yeah. But now I'll be like, eh. yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, my first impression was she was very quiet, and then you followed up with me about something, and then I think that's when I first noticed that there's there's a lot of drive there, and it's like you have you're obviously quite capable and quite able, and you you thought about what you're doing like quite deeply. Um, and then that then evolved into you jumping on the Dream Nation team prematurely, I guess, like during lockdown, we was trying to do a few things. Mm. And the way you handled that was like excellent, which is, although that project never got released, everything that you did was great. And even the people that you reached out to, a lot of them came back to me and said, 
Abby Soye, you need to hold on to her because mm. she's really good at what she does. Um, and then, yeah, when it came to me launching this podcast, I was like, "This, you're the person that I need. And you've been outstanding. Oh, Sometimes you. a bit stern. Um, you, you don't, you don't take... <laughs> Don't take a lot of my nonsense. Um, and But what you are great at is because I tend to be quite big picture and thinking about the future, you're amazing at bringing us right here, right now, that we need this episode done this week and you need to do these lines the way that it's been written down. Otherwise, it's not going to come across the right way. So I like that you're, you're passionate about what you do, but you also know you're good at it. And you're, you know, you've got enough confidence to be able to even push back on me when you think that this is the right way to go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm going on to the stern comment, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I appreciate everything that you said. And um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it, it also goes into the environment that you're in. That I think I said this before that allows you to be that way to actually, you know. The, your your boss is like I want to hear your opinions and I, I, and if I do, if I don't agree with them still share like you mm. know I think n- not a lot of people have that working environment to allow that to happen but the sternness you know what that also is in that because I think it takes a lot like your it takes a lot to say to somebody. Your idea is crap. Your idea is... Mm. <laughs> Which I would you never do. say that. You say it in nicer ways, but <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying to me. You're like, yeah, we're yeah. not doing that. <laughs> yeah, no. But you surprised me with this idea because it was actually you. You brought it up that, you know, we should talk about our podcast, the podcast and how we created it. Initially, I was just like, that's boring. Mm. But then... And not, and not boring because what we have been doing has been like straightforward, but because I'm like, do people really want to know? But then you shaped it and you were like, yeah, but it's about, you know, the dynamics and how um, we've worked through things and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, you've, mm. you've also figured me out on how to oh, yeah, get your idea. Oh yeah, without a doubt, no, no, doubt <laughs> like, <laughs> it's needed, it's needed. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I don't want to say as a, I guess, I mean, I don't know if every, like as a business woman or as a woman, it, yeah, uh, it sometimes can feel a bit bad to say to someone like, oh, no, what you're doing is wrong and have to be so stern about mm-hmm. it because you don't want, for me, I don't want to hurt y- your feelings. Not that, you know, you'll be hurt by them, but just in general, like you don't want to hurt the person's feelings. And also you're like, hold on, like, why am I so bold and confident that this is wrong? <laughs> like, where does this come from? Mm-hmm. And I think in within myself, I'm still trying to figure that out. Like, I know you say that, you know, you're quite confident with the decisions you make. And in that moment, I think I am. But then sometimes I'm like, where does this confidence even come from? Because this world of podcasting and it's still very fresh and new to all of us. Um, And yeah, so I'm still trying to figure it out myself. So you're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, So what type of, what type of decisions have we made then actually that we've had to go through the back, the back and forth. Back and forth. Um, There was one that I had to make before you actually came on board. Okay. this was December last year. Uh, and it was worth us going to even do this in the first place, in mm. all honesty, because I knew I wanted to do a podcast. I knew there was a lot of potential behind it, but I also knew that I could not do this by myself. Mm. And you wasn't here at that point. I didn't, I didn't know that you was going to come on board. I didn't know if I could afford you. Um, so, but I made a commitment to the studio that we work at, um, which is Dream Factory, what we're doing now. Um, they are amazing. Um, I made that commitment. I put the money down, paid it. Didn't know even the deposit. You have to pay the whole year in advance. Um, That's a hefty and, amount. Yeah, it's not a small <laughs> amount of money. And I did that with like no plan of how to deliver. And that was quite difficult to do. Mm. Then I think a couple of months later, that's when you came on board. And then we had, I think, our first difficult conversation, which would be around your, your compensation. Oh, we're going there? Yeah, we're going to go there. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was... <laughs> do you know what? Before Dream Nation, or before working on the podcast, I have spoken to Claude about how to compensate myself. Before I, I said, mm-hmm. you know, I've got these different opportunities and I'm like, I don't know what I should do and I'm struggling. And it was, it, yeah, and you gave me some really great idea, ad, advice on how, how, I, how to pitch myself, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I don't even know if we, we're sharing this advice. Maybe you should share it again. Uh, yeah, yeah. But... 
Do you want to share? Yeah, well, okay, firstly, yeah. I think if I remember correctly, or it'll probably be the same advice I give to most freelancers, which is stop, stop packaging your value based on your time. So we have this nature or kind of tendency to be like, my hourly rate is going to be X, Y, and Z, and then I will then charge people accordingly. Whereas on the other end of it, the person receiving that rarely cares in terms of what, how long it takes you to do anything. So if you can accomplish the same task in an hour that will take you 10 hours, I don't, that's, that's irrelevant to me. All I care about is the end result. Mm. So rather than thinking about how long it takes you to do, because you can learn to do things faster, instead think how valuable is this to the other person. And then if you instead charge based on the value that you provide to that person, then you're more than likely be able to get a much better deal for yourself and make negotiations a lot easier. Yes. And that is still hard, but yes. <laughs> um, so then when it came to, to Dream, Dream Nation and you were like, okay, so what, how much would you charge? And, he, and Claude always does this thing. And even people that reach out to me about working with Claude, and they're like, oh, how much would he go for? I'm like, you pitch what you think your value is. And if Claude can do it, I'm looking, if Claude can do it, he will do it. But he, you, you pitch yourself. Don't think, okay, because of who somebody is or because, like what is actually your value to that person um, and then go from there. Because otherwise sometimes you can under pitch yourself um, or, or you're overdoing it and you're like, you're just greedy. Yeah, <laughs> we had that recently. So mm -hmm. even with this amaz amazing advice, when you then asked me that question, I was like, I, I think there's that thing with freelancers that you could do things for free. <laughs> you're like, I could do it for free, mm -hmm. but I have to get to that point in my life where I'm actually building myself up, building a business. And also when you feel like you're being paid for the work that you do, you also feel valued. Mm -hmm. um, so I went back and forth. I think I, I wasn't straight. I wasn't like, oh yeah, this is the amount straight away. Um, and then I finally, I even gave you a range. I couldn't even give, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and then I finally, um, told you but I was like and also I was aware that if this was like another production for like a bigger company I may have also been like actually this would be have to be my full-time job mm -hmm. so I would pitch at this amount yeah. but knowing what I could actually give as I already have a job and this is the amount of time that I could give to this podcast this is what I would say so I was realistic as well I could yeah. just I could have pitched myself at some crazy amount but mm -hmm. it's ridiculous anyway but yeah I gave it to you and what did you do <laughs> uh the thing is with your one in particular I'd already put a number in my head of this is how much I, I want to be able to pay you. Mm. And you're, that fell within the range that you said. So yeah. I was like, yeah, fine. Like we just took it from there and let's move forward. I feel like one thing that I was clear with you on though is that even what I'm paying you now, if I'm being honest with you, the value that you provided is definitely below that amount, but it is the most I can do as mm. of today. Um, but with our journey as hopefully when we become even more successful, then we'll be able to continue to increase that because for those that are thinking about working with Abby Soy in the future, um, that's not going to be an option because <laughs> my, my goal is to take her full time for my company because there's a lot more to do. Um, she knows this as well. And I, I tell other people like, you know, you can enjoy it for today, but yeah. But yeah, that's the goal. And I think your willingness to see the vision of where it is that I was trying to go still hold your ground in terms of what was important to you and making that clear to me so I knew kind of where your boundaries were in terms of like from a pricing perspective but then also the willingness to to grow with me on this project that I think that made all the difference and mm. that's part of the reason why like could there were other people that I spoke to and they might have felt more this is just a job to them like it's just an opportunity it's just a way to make a bit of money whereas for you it's like you've generally bought into the vision so I was happy to make that sacrifice and yeah, make it a consistent part for, of, I guess, your income now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I definitely bought into it. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up to our mailing list at dreamnation.co forward slash mailing list. And from there, you'll be able to find out about all the things that we have coming for you. But on money still, there was the other decision that we had to make, which was um, 
the levels to to our studio membership here as well oh my gosh yeah so I, I, i'm gonna yeah, i'm yeah, gonna go take i'm gonna take this yeah. one so um dream factory is absolutely amazing because they have two studio spaces um but in each studio space like the one that we're in right now there's multiple rooms and it's just a lot um and the, the one that we were in before is a bit smaller but it's equally amazing but we we had an opportunity to view the one we're in now. And um, when we saw it, we were like, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, the this first, one is yeah. you know the first one is is it's, it's like great. That's it's where great. The first few episodes, no, yeah, actually, no. you can see some. So the episode yeah. that is Courtney. coming out next week, Bissies, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bissies episode you'll yeah, see yeah. It in, and yeah, Courtney and Renee. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there are any others that are out that have not yeah. yet, no, yeah. but yeah. So those episodes you'll see, and you'll see it's 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 wonderful. Um, but we had a vision and we wanted a space. And you know what? It's so funny. Anyway, we'll go into that because where we are right now is like, they've never actually done podcasts here before. And now they do podcasts there and yeah. it's all that. But I'll get into that. But yeah, so we came to do a, a tour of this space and we were like, oh gosh, this place is amazing. You know, we'll dream about it. And mm. yeah. And then Claude was like to me, um, do you see this space as somewhere that we should be? And I was just like, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but where we are right now, you know, it's fine because I knew how much it's- the difference was yeah. and I was like where we are is fine we can dream about this um dream 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 um and it will happen you know when the time is right because we know as well we're not making any money from the podcast at the moment so mm-hmm. that is a big investment to then like I don't know is it like triple the amount or double the amount so, I think it's double I double the amount yeah. um and um and then Claude just <sighs> so for me I mean we're here yeah so <laughs> for me I remember the reason why I asked you that question, because as I was walking around, I could see that you fell in love with the place. Like, I could see that you wasn't going to say it because you're like, ah, oh, he, he's not going to want to pay for pay for this now. I'm not paying for it, so <laughs> I can't say go and pay for it. But I could see, because, and I think this goes back to one of the points that I said from very early on with you, is that I see this podcast as being as much yours as it is mine. Although I'm in front of the camera, this is also your vision. And going back to like a lesson I've probably said like a million times on the podcast now, when you're a leader, yes, your job is to have a, the vision, is to get the right people and it's to give those people the resources they need to be mm-hmm. successful. And I saw this as being a resource that you needed to be able to, and that's your vision for what this could be. Mm-hmm. So I just saw it as part of my job. And yes, it was hard, but you made it work. Yeah, we, we are here and... Um yeah, it definitely. There is definitely something in believing each other, like that we get the vision. Because even where we are right now, that if you ever go to Dream Factory and go on a tour, I would encourage you to do so. Obviously, you'll be taking our studio time, but you know, <laughs> do what you got to do. Um, they've got some really lovely sets. Um, and actually, when we first came to see the studio, it was those sets that was like, oh, wow, I can definitely see it. But mm-hmm. then when we started talking about the podcast, we realized that, hold on, we need something even more just free, like mm-hmm. airy, free, and not as like colorful. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But you know, something um, that was more us, more us, yeah. And then, like, we found out of all the spaces in the studio, this like section that was like, doesn't as you it can was see, it's a bit this, neglected, like, yeah, I don't yeah. think they were really using it, and, yeah. But it just once again, this was you like coming in and seeing the vision of you know what, if you move this hair and you do a few things here, and then you also worked with our uh, amazing cameraman Benny, I think it was Benny, no, it was, no, it was Carl, it was Carl and then Benny, I think it was a combination of the two over a couple of weeks. We ended up creating what is now my favorite set for us. Mm. Um, although the one that we used, oh, yeah, last the one upstairs, week, that, that also banged as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really do love that set as well. You're gonna see it. Oh, you've already seen uh, it, yeah, yeah. Last, like two weeks ago. Um, but yeah, that again was you know, it was a decision that we had to. Yeah, but I think it make it just makes a difference when you believe in each other, and you're just like, okay, yeah, you're think you're not thinking to gain something else. It's all to it's all for the gain of Dream Nation, um, and if it's possible to make those investments um, now to get the results in the future, then you know you can do it. Do it. Um, yeah, I'm all for even. I know that you know Claude says that he basically doesn't want me to work for anybody else, but anybody else that I work for as well, I say the same thing. Like you know, they talk about doing a set or oh, just I'll just do this and that. I'm like, 
do, if you had the money, what would you do? And then we build around what we can afford after, you know, after that. But mm. think big and then try and, based on what you can afford, um, create uh, like a smaller size version of it until you yeah. get to that. Um, but don't limit, don't limit yourself and your thinking and yeah. your dreaming. Your dreaming. That's actually on a quick note. If you do, if you are interested in signing up for Dream Factory, dreamnation.co forward slash Dream Factory. If you go there, then there'll be information about the um, about Dream Factory and how you can potentially sign up and get a get some sort of a discount as well. Yes, and Claude is in trouble with me because um, we were going to do an event this November about how to become a board member, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, we're going to postpone it. We are going to postpone it due to unforeseen circumstances they you know what they were foreseeable <laughs> <laughs> they were foreseeable so i have things like the venue and all of that lined up and i've even got like the the information to share the workshop all of that but i feel like i haven't been good at sometimes at uh delivering on all the things that i that i want to do and mm-hmm. that's because as i look at my life my responsibilities I, I run this business obviously i have a full-time job i sit on a few boards um there's just a lot to do and as i as i kind of continue to try and push things further and further and further i sometimes will overcommit myself mm. and that was that this this event was one of the situations um However, I think the most important thing is is that whenever I do make mistakes, I do learn the lesson, then I put a system in place to um, to resolve it. We're yeah. going to talk about systems because me and Abby Sawyer are always fighting about systems and procedures as well. But what I've realised, so now to prevent me ever failing on pulling off an event when I say I'm going to do it, uh, I've now hired a new person to the team who's focused on logistics. We spent some time working out all the steps that are needed and yeah, taking things from there. So yes, it was something that I I underdelivered on, overpromised, underdelivered, but it won't happen again. Yeah. And I know Abby Sawyer is annoyed because she has put it, advertised it on multiple episodes in the past now. Um, and if you was excited about that and it hasn't happened, you have my sincerest apology. You know, drop me a message on the IG so I can apologize to you directly for that as well, because that wasn't good. So you guys. Yeah. And that's something as well that I've been talking to Claude about, about consistency. Um, because just a week ago, Claude disappeared for a day. Yes. <laughs> uh, to be fair. And on the day that we're supposed to put an episode put out. An episode mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had burnt out. Well, actually, no, I had semi burnt out and I realized if I didn't stop right there and then, then I would have burnt out. Mm. So I desperately was like, you know what? I'm going to isolate myself from the world for a little bit, regain my energy and then come back, which worked because I was able to do my part by the next morning. Um, But yeah, like it's not a good look. Uh, And once again, this this is partly that happened partly because there were certain tasks that I shouldn't be doing mm. that I had to take on because we don't have things in place yet. Um, so as you guys might have noticed, we are let's say inconsistent with putting social media clips out. We, it's like <laughs> I could basically say we have no social media clips. <laughs> yeah, um, and we we understand it's actually one of the most important parts. If, if from my point of view, in all honesty. I think far more people are going to view us on social media than will ever watch a whole episode. So therefore, by us not putting those clips out, we're missing out a huge part mm. of the the whole purpose of this podcast, mm. ultimately. So because that's for a number of reasons, we haven't been able to get them out consistently. It fell on me to do. Mm. And when that got added to my plate with everything else I've got to do, then it ended up taking being one thing too many. Yeah, and then last week I was like, oh, don't worry, I'll take it on. <laughs> I can do it, yeah. Um, and then I couldn't, I didn't no. have any capacity to yeah. do it either because we both have other jobs, mm. <laughs> you, know, we, you know. We've both got uh, all these other things going on. So it's like, as much as you can, and I'm learning this about myself that I'm more of a, I can be very much a, um, 
if somebody if there's an issue I'm like right get it done duh, 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 duh. Mm. and then in that moment I can commit to doing all these things and, yeah. and wholeheartedly in that moment I'm like I will do it yeah, and yeah. then life says sorry yeah. sis you don't have the capacity mm. um, and then sometimes I'll be fighting life like I can do it I can do it and then yeah you, again you, you burn out um, do you know what's interesting go on this is and this is now where I think sometimes we see things differently because my answer to all of that is build a good system Here and go. get a good process <laughs> so that it doesn't have to be painful or stressful and it can happen yeah. ideally without anybody being involved. Yeah. Whereas, like I said earlier on in the episode, actually, one of your strengths, but also one of your weaknesses is like getting <laughs> things done now. Yeah, yeah. And I want it done now. You want it done now. And your approach is, I am going to apply more effort and power my way through things. Yeah. Which is sometimes needed. It's yeah. sometimes needed. But it if you keep on doing that, then you'll burn yourself out. Yeah. But not only will you burn yourself out, if you don't build a system, then it can't scale. Because you can do that to produce maybe like three clips per episode. Whereas I want us to get to the point where we can put out a clip every single day, if not multiple times a day. And there's, that's not a level that you can get to where you can just power your way through that that requires a system, that requires like a process, that requires having people in place to do it. Mm. So I'm often saying, and this is what was happening, is that I would say to Abby Sawyer, trust me, I'm building the process, it's happening, it's going, I know it's not what you want, I know it's not fast, I know all of that. And Abby Sawyer's like, I hear you, but if we don't put this episode out right now, not the episode, if you don't put this clip out right now, then it's not good enough or we're gonna we're wasting the we're wasting like this opportunity to promote and you're we're not getting our you're not getting the awareness that we could get. Yeah. And it's like the thing is you're not wrong, but neither am I. And it's they're just both needed. But yeah. it's the push and pull. It's or, the push and pull. Yeah. yeah, I think it's that equal ground because we need to get so in the business of social media, we need to get social media clips out like even if we're working on a process or a system, we need to get social media clips out. And I think you were saying that, you know, I'm working on this whole system and I have no, und I can't see what you're doing. Mm. So in my head, all I'm seeing is there are no social media clips and Claude said he's sorted it. Yeah. And so I'm like, on you, like, where's the social media clip? What's going on? I can imagine it's just, um, it's a lot. And you, again, this is not, you have so many other things you're doing. Um, but at the same time, I was like, it needs to, <laughs> something needs happen. to go out. And um, actually, yeah. that taught me actually a really important lesson on communication though. Because the, I, f I noticed the time when I like took, took some time out that I showed you what ha actually yeah, is yeah. happening. I showed you all the things that's actually taken place yeah. and how the system is forming. Then it, then you had a completely different attitude towards it. Yeah. And I was like, that makes complete sense because to your knowledge, I made you a promise and then nothing is happening. Yeah. Whereas a lot was happening is just that building systems take time. Yeah. So this yeah. system business is, is definitely something I've I've learned with you and you're like you're basically forcing me to learn. Yeah, you have no choice. <laughs> I appreciate because I again like I see myself that um I, I, you know what? I don't want to say it's even impatience, but it, I think it is. I can be like, if I can see it, like this is what needs to be done. I'm just like, let's just get on with it. Mm. But like, life is not like that. And also if you rush something, you don't get, you miss things yeah. and you know, but then in my head, I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm rushing it. I'm just like, let's get on with it. But, um, but the process you've, so go on. Cause like that is, everything you're talking about and doing, the reason why I'm so confident to be like, we're not going down that pathway <laughs> is because I've done this before. Mm. And in fact, I've done this multiple times before mm. and I've learned the hard way that this is not how it goes. And it's a very, it's a very like new entrepreneur thing to do in that sense of like, I will win through effort and hard work and creativity. Mm. You need effort, hard work and creativity, but it can only take you so far. Yeah. If you want to build something that's going to honestly be consistent, last, and ideally make a lot of money, then the only thing you need to focus on is systems. Well, not only thing, but your focal point should be systems. Yeah. And like, I've seen this lesson so many times through my own business, through other people's businesses, through what succeeds and what fails. So that's why my mindset always goes there. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I understand and I see, I see the benefit. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying today's episode. 
If you are, please make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. Don't forget to like this video as well. So we've got systems, we've got, I'm trying to think what else was on my, let me quickly check. We do have editors. Oh, the editors. Yeah. That's been an interesting one because there wasn't, to be fair, I know when we I, first hold on, hold on. Was, I know, I know, I know. Are I know. you sure you want to go down here? Yeah. Why not? I love everybody I spoke to. Yeah, no, but I said, they all were amazing people. Okay. They all were amazing. Um, and we did have an argument, actually. Semi-argument. Um, we've had, we've, had, no, we've, we've had many semi, uh, yeah, semi-arguments. Like, we've never, like, actually been fuming or anything like no, that. No, no, it's no, always, no. like, professional yeah. disagreements. And, like, yeah, it came down to us having... There were two, um, like, great editors, but they're both great for two very different reasons. Um... And I, I was like leaning more towards one and you was leaning more towards the other. Yeah, do you know what? One of them was like amazing system systems. You know, I feel like I would even love to promote this person, but I'm just gonna leave it. Um, if you wanna know, you can message and we we gladly share all the people that we spoke to about editing, you know, editing this podcast. So um, yeah, he was very much like you. Mm. In, not in terms of who he is, but, but the, way he the way he thought, was thinking, yeah. um, very systematically, very much about, you know, there's a process to do things, da, 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 da. but when it came to the actual edit, I felt it was very like robotical. Mm. And that's the problem with systems is that if you don't do, if you, it's easy for systems to become soulless. Yes. And I, and I felt, I felt to a degree it what like it, it wasn't getting what we were trying to do. Mm. And then the person that, I came across who is the person that edits our podcast right now. Um, I didn't see his work. He had never edited a podcast before, but I don't even know if he knew that, but it's all on his website. Um, But he's a photographer um, and he's done um, like campaigns and stuff like that. And the way he shot, I was like, he really embeds himself into what his work. Like mm. I can see that if he's like, okay, this is the project, he takes time to understand the project. So he edits in that way. And it's such a, you see how the episodes are edited, including this one is so, it's so smooth. There's no like, cut the cuts, you know, I mean, th- there's some, uh, there's some direction that I give with certain things, but it's just smooth. Mm. Um, and I, I enjoyed his color grading. And yeah, so I just like, you know, I fell in love with his with his editing, you know? Um, yeah. But Claude was like, that's all great, but process. <laughs> and I actually hear it and we, you know, we go, we, we're trying to streamline, streamline that now and get to understand that with the editor now, because we need, process is so important still. Yes, it's lovely. He knows how to edit, fantastic. Mm-hmm. But in order for us to make sure we're working um, to the best capability and that all of us in the team are not overstretched, including the editor, we need to put in process. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's combining the two. And you so amazingly are gonna meet him soon, I think tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. Um, and yeah. He doesn't live in London. He doesn't live in London. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. That's why the two need to yeah, come together. It's, yeah. That's probably it, why we work well, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, Actually, that's that's interesting because you said your bigger picture, and then I come and say direct. Yeah. But I guess with when it comes to the creativity, I might be I might go into oh la, this is amazing, and you're like okay, this is great, but how does this work? Yeah, so yeah. I think it's interchange. It, it is, and it's it's really helpful, and I think that's why we do like you say work well so well together um, in that context. And I think what was also really interesting about our editor and our decision was. I did say, this is who I want, but I'm going to trust you on this. Yeah. And when he delivered the trailer um, for, oh, yeah. for, I was just like, you know what? You, you made the right call, Abby. So, like, so talented, so talented. He is, but, really, yeah, but process. Uh, now, we, are, we do now see the problems of a lack of process. Yes. Where sometimes, sometimes I'm, uh, like, uploading the video, like, literally minutes before it needs to go live. Yeah. Or we're getting things, like, not at the times that we would like, et cetera. Um, and I'm mindful of, like you said, it's not just about making my life easier or your life easier, but 
this goes back to the resources that I spoke about as a leader. Mm. I need to make sure that he's not burning himself out and mm. that he's having a great experience with this too. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll you do work- care about that. You really do. And like you said to me that both of us have said that we probably could edit this whole episode, this podcast and do all the functions ourselves. Mm. But, you know, specifically with me, you said, well, I don't, I actually just want you to focus on um, the actual content, the actual journalism you know bringing that in like I don't want you to be worrying about all this other stuff because it just it takes away from it and that was actually one of the things that I really appreciated because in my previous in one of my previous jobs actually I got brought in to be quite a senior role to manage a team and it was about editor like editorially Mm -hmm. um oh gosh am I gonna get in trouble for actually I don't care (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so I, brought, I was brought in um, to manage a team. And I think when I initially got the job, it was looked at like they, they understood my ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, they had seen my, I don't like to showcase this, but I have a YouTube channel that I did years ago. Anyway, they'd seen all of that, which I was like, what, you even found that? And they're like, I get you. Like, we really want you to just, everything you think, just give it. But then the practicality of the job, they literally stripped it all, that all away from me. And they're like, we don't actually care about what you think. Right. Um, and in fact, you've shown that you can edit stuff. You just edit. Oh, wow. You just do this or, you know, yeah, we know that you can do it. And it's like, that's not even my job. Yeah. And so when you came, there was one day you said to me, I don't want you to do any of that. I want to focus. I want you to focus on what you're actually amazing at. Like what? I mean, you're amazing at all these things, but this is the thing. This is your like basically your bread and butter. Yeah. Do it and do it to like with an ec- excellence. And I want you to be free to do that. I was like, wow, Claude is actually seeing, you know, the things that I can do. Like, are you believing in it? And it really, it, I really, really appreciated that. And I think that's also it's just encouraging. And I guess you're like you learned from the previous episode. You're a words of affirmation person. Um, so it, it has it has helped. But I think. Even in that, like I've never even said I'm a word of affirmations person, but I think those type of things help for me to know that, oh, okay, the person that is is paying paying me, Mula actually believes in me, not just says, oh, not just using, but actually mm-hmm. like, I want you to grow in this area and be the best. So uh, a bit rambled, but I really appreciate that. It's my pleasure. And yeah. you are doing a fantastic job. See, he always says that, <laughs> even, if, even if I am not. <laughs> No, I don't think you would do that. I think you would call me out. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you where you can be better. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. like as a whole, this, we wouldn't be here. Like this episode wouldn't be happening. Everything we've done before, our editor, like literally there would be no podcast if he wasn't here. So Appreciate it. I'm not saying that we can't get better because we will. We will. And the long game you've been talking exactly. about, which you've been encouraging me about, mm-hmm. which I'm like, I, the, the long game has not been something, I'm looking at the time, the long game where you post things and you're consistent, but you don't see, you might not see exactly the results that you yeah. are looking for in that moment. Sometimes I can be like, oh gosh, like this is a really great episode. I really enjoyed this. Why is it not getting a certain the amount numbers, of views? And you, yeah. You've said that, you know what? For I don't the, care. I don't care and it's just like it takes a lot of pressure Mm. but it also encourages me to be better but it's like Mm. uh, that's not common Mm. but again you've said that you're not focusing on what you know like a new you're not a new entrepreneur you're not new to this you've seen how things go and you you've got your mind on the things that are the bigger picture that's it um yeah this is a marathon 100% this is a math one and that's how my mentality towards it so as I've said to you and I don't mind even people at home hearing this the whole first year of this podcast in my mind it's practice it's our warm up round it's our we're getting used to this we're building our systems we're getting to understand each other I'm learning how to even be a host because yeah when we look back at our very first episode painful although when you get to see things you're, you're probably confused you don't yeah, even know what the first episode know. it was, right. it was With Courtney. Courtney and Rene Courtney was and our Rene, first yeah. episode and what you would have seen in the audience is like oh this is this is not bad what Abby Sawyer had to do <laughs> <laughs> to turn that into a good episode for people to see was insane and I generally felt sorry for you but then when we look at the things <laughs> that we've done since then or the most recent things um my hosting has become significantly better, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like that's going to happen across the board I will become a better host. You'll become a better producer. Yeah. Our editors will get better. Our systems will get better. Our social media will get better. Like everything is going to get better. Yeah. So 
I was very okay and still am very okay with if we get if we get a, mi- a million views like in this first year fantastic if we get a hundred it is what it is mm. but what matters to me is the consistency yeah. can we keep on going can we keep on getting better because if we put good enough content out there for long enough then we're going to win this game yeah agreed I think it's a, a great place to I think end today thank you that was very um oh we went in <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's anything that we've mentioned in terms of any resources or any support um, ar- around building a podcast, or if you want some advice, please feel free to send us a message. Um, we're happy to point you in the right direction. Um, but yeah, until next time. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We release a new episode every Sunday, so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out. If you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode, then check out the recommendation above. Don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast. This is Claude Williams, you've been watching Behind the Dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation event.